All right, the uh, next operation that we'll look at for discrete time signals is what we call time scaling a discrete time signal. So here's our definition of a time scaled signal. What we do is we create a new signal y of k by replacing the discrete time variable k with a k. So a is just a constant, so what we call the time scaling factor. And depending on the value for a, different things happen. So if a is a number larger than one, we say that we are downsampling the signal. And we'll show an example of that here in just a minute. For values of a larger than zero and less than one, we call that an expanded version of x of k. And we'll show an example of that here as well. So the value of a, whether it's less than one or larger than one, really determines what y of k ends up looking like dramatically, whether it's downsampled, kind of a, a shrunken version, or whether it's an expanded signal, kind of a stretched out version. So let's go ahead and look at the time scaling example now. We'll do a, a you know, specific example of downsampling and a specific example of this time expansion. All right, so let's do our time scaling. And for both of these examples, let's plot this signal right here and we'll use this kind of base x of k as our example. So it's a pretty simple signal. It's zero everywhere except for times zero to five. It kind of counts down six, five, four, three, two, one. So that's our base signal. And in our first example here, let's do downsampling. So let's pick a value for a that is larger than one. So in this case, I'm gonna pick a value of a equal to two, and we'll create y of k by setting y of k equal to x of 2k. I think the easiest way to think through these signal operations initially is just to list down specific values of k and which value the new signal maps to the old signal. So for instance, when time k is zero, if I replace k with zero, I can figure out which value of x of k I need to grab by plugging into this equation right here. So when I replace k with zero, two times zero is zero, and then I know that at time zero, my new signal is equal to my old signal at time zero. Well, that's not horribly interesting. What happens when k is equal to one? Well, at time one, k equals one, I replace k equals one here, one times two is two, and now I know that my signal at time one is equal to my original signal at time two. And I can just keep going. Y of two is equal to X of four, because it's off by a factor of two. Y at time three is equal to X at time six, etc. So you can kind of see what's, what's going on here. When A is equal to two, I end up grabbing really just every other value of the signal. Zero, two, four, six, etc. I've skipped over the values at time one, time three, time five. So that's why we call it downsampling, because I'm really only grabbing a subset of the values of my original signal. If I plot y of k, here's what I get. At time zero, it was equal to x of zero, which was equal to six. At time one, I get the signal x of time two, which was equal to two. At time two, I'm equal to my signal x at time four, which was this value right here and so on. So like I said, it's like we're skipping all of these odd values of my original signal. So that's what the downsampled signal looks like. All right, let's go ahead and do the expansion now. So exact same signal we'll work with, but now we're gonna set A to a different value less than one. So same thing here, we're gonna create a new signal Y of K. You can see the difference now though. In this case now, Instead of a equaling two, I've decided to set a equal to one half. So we'll end up with an expansion or an upsampled version of the signal. Again, I think the easiest way to think through this is just pick a particular value for k and then fill out this equation to see what your new signal is equal to. So when k is zero, k over two is zero. What about when k is one? Well, here's where something kind of weird happens. If k is equal to one, one over two is a half and I need to figure out what my signal x is at time one half. Well, that doesn't even make sense. We're dealing with discrete time signals. In the original signal that I plotted, there wasn't a time one half. There was time zero, time one, time two. So for the time being, when I get to values here that don't make sense, that are kind of fractions, well, let's just put down a zero. So that's what we're gonna do for now. There's another way to do that that we'll talk about at the very end, but for now, when we get these fractional samples, our fractional times, we'll just write down as zero. When time two, two over two is one, so that's x of one. When k is three, three over two is three halves, which doesn't make sense, so I'll write down as zero. 
when k is 4, 4 over 2 is 2, so that's exit time 2, etc. So just keep doing that. And then if you think back to what our original signal was, remember our original signal started at 6 and counted down. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. So I'm going to have 6, 5, 4, 3. But in between all those samples, I'm going to have zeros. So there's a 0, and then it's 5, and then a 0, and then 4, and then a 0, and then 3. And honestly, I should really just keep going, and I'll go ahead and fill that out. I didn't make the table over here for that, but you can see the pattern. I'm grabbing every single value of my original signal, but I'm putting a zero in between. So I can just keep counting down all the way down to zero. So now you can see why we call this expansion. It's like my original signal has spread out by a factor of two, because I've inserted or upsampled these zeros in between all of my values. That is one way we can do this. We can put zeros where we don't know the value. Another way to do this, and what people often do, is they use interpolation. What they say is, you know, you asked me for a value here at time k over 2, which was equal to a half. That didn't make sense. Initially, we wrote down a 0. What we could do instead is we could average between the two adjacent values. So initially, I had a 6 and a 5. 6 plus 5 is 11, 11 over 2 is 5 and a half. Instead of writing a 0 there, maybe we should write down 5 and a half. And then the same thing here. Instead of writing down a 0, let's take these two neighboring values, which were equal to 5 and 4, add those up, which is 9. 9 over 2 is 4 and a half, and let's write down 4 and a half. So this is me doing linear interpolation between the values. And that's another option that you have when doing upsampling. Instead of doing zero insertion, you could do linear interpolation between the values to put in a value that probably makes more sense in a lot of cases. Very much up to your specific application. All right, well, that wraps up this video on um, time upsampling and time downsampling. In the next video, we'll get to kind of a special case of this. What we've been doing here is called time scaling in general, where you replace k with a k. Here, the value of a was always a positive number. Sometimes it was bigger than 1, sometimes it was less than 1, and that had a profound impact on what happened in our signal that we came up with. In the next video, we'll also replace k with a k, but the value of a will be minus 1, and we'll get something that we call time reversal.